Welcome back everyone, Patrick here. And in this next video, what we have to do is take each of these expressions here, we have to rewrite them with a positive exponent. So notice that most of these, they have a negative exponent. So we have to rewrite the expression in a way where it's gonna have a positive exponent. And then we have to evaluate each of these. So just in general, the two biggest rules we're gonna be using is if we have something like a to the negative x, for example, we can rewrite this as one over a to the power of positive x. Okay, this and this are the same, and notice that then you're gonna have a positive exponent. You could just bring that exponent down into the denominator, so that's one rule we're gonna be using. And then another rule is if we have a fraction to a negative exponent. And then this, what we can do is we could just flip the fraction and it would change the exponent to a positive. It's actually this and this, they're the same rule. If you think about this whole expression A being a fraction, basically one over any fraction, okay, is just gonna be the reciprocal of that fraction. So that's what's happening here, but usually the fraction case, quote unquote, it showed separately, where we have a fraction to a negative exponent. What we could do is we could flip that fraction and then change the exponent to a positive. And then to evaluate it, we could take the numerator to that exponent and then the denominator to that exponent as well. All right, so those are the rules we're gonna be using. So let's start off with part A. We got three to the power of negative three. Well, over here, we'd be using this where the A is a three and then the negative X is the negative three. So we could rewrite this as one over three to the power of positive three. So that's how we could take this and rewrite it with a positive exponent. So that's part of the question that we answered and then evaluating it three to the power of three is just 27. So 1 over 27 ends up being the answer for part A. Now part B, we have negative 3 in brackets to the power of negative 3. So same thing is going to apply here. What we're going to do is we're going to take 1 over negative 3 to the power of positive 3. Like that. Right, so same thing, it's just that now this A value over here was a negative three. So we brought it down and then that became a positive exponent. And then what is negative three to the power of positive three? Well, it's negative three times negative three, which is positive nine times negative three would give us negative 27. And then the negative we could just bring up to the numerator. So negative one over 27 ends up being the answer. And then we have zero to the power of positive two. Notice that that's a positive exponent already, so we don't have to rewrite it as a negative exponent. And then what's zero to the power two? Well, it's just gonna be zero times zero, which is just zero, like that. Now this one, be careful, zero to the negative two. This one's a little bit different because we have a negative exponent. So this, according to this rule, we would have one over zero to the power of positive two, and we know zero to the power of positive two is zero, so one over zero, but then this over here is actually undefined, right? Because you can't divide anything by zero. So rewriting it as a positive exponent is this, but then you can't evaluate it. It's an undefined expression. And then over here, let's actually erase this just to give myself some room here. So this one, you gotta be careful with. We have negative two to the power of negative four, and then we have negative two in brackets to the negative four. So they look similar, but that bracket makes a big difference. If you remember, we went over questions like this in a previous exponent unit. If this negative two is not in brackets, then it's only that this two over here is to this exponent. And with bed mass, what we have to do is we have to work with the exponent first and then we can multiply. So it's almost like there's a negative one in front like that. And then this two is to the negative four, right? Whenever you see something like negative, let's say a 
to the power of some kind of exponent, uh, let's just say negative x, you can rewrite this as negative 1 times a to the negative x. Both of those mean the same thing. You can't do this and rewrite as this because over here in brackets it's the negative 2. This whole thing is to the power of negative 4, but if it's just something like this where the negative is by itself, it's not attached to this a, so only this a is to the power of that negative x. Okay, so just be careful with, with uh, questions like this. So what would happen here is the negative 1 we would keep on the side, and then 2 to the power of negative 4, that would be 1 over 2 to the power of positive 4. Okay, and then this negative 1, it's like over 1, so negative 1 times positive 1 is negative 1, and then 1 times 2 to the power of 4 is just 2 to the power of 4. So taking this, rewriting it with a positive exponent, that's what it would be. That negative 1 would stay in the numerator, and then we'd end up with negative 1 over 16, like that. Versus over here, what would happen is this entire negative 2 would come down to the denominator, so it would be 1 over negative 2 to the power of positive 4, like that. And a negative value to an even exponent, that would always give us a positive expression. So this would end up being 1 over positive 16. All right, so just a slight difference between these, but you get an entirely different answer. One is negative, the other one is positive. And then moving on to these, for all of these, we would be using this rule right there. So starting off with part g, what we would do here, 1 over 2 to the power of negative 3, we flip the fraction, 2 over 1, and then change the exponent to a positive. And then 2 over 1, we don't have to write that, we could just write 2 to the power of 3. So this and this are the same thing, and we rewrote it with a positive exponent, 2 to the power of 3. That just gives us 8. Over here, same thing, fraction, flip, and then change the exponent to a positive. Right, so this and this, they're the exact same thing. You could even check these in your calculator if you want to make sure that they're the same thing. So we rewrote with a positive exponent. Now to evaluate it, we would take the numerator to that exponent. We would take the denominator to that exponent. Make sure you put the entire numerator in brackets, entire denominator in brackets. And here it doesn't really matter, but when you start having negatives, that becomes more important. So 3 to the power of 4 would give us 81, and then 2 to the power of 4 would give us 16. So 81 over 16 is the final answer for part h. Over here, we would have we would flip this, so we would end up with 3 over negative 2. Now, the negative we could just bring up to the top, right? Because just flipping it, there's no exponents in the bracket. So if we flip it, 3 over negative 2 is the same as negative 3 over 2. So where that negative doesn't really matter where that negative is in the bracket. Um, and it's just more proper for it to be in the numerator. So we just flip the fraction, change it to a positive exponent, and then over here, that negative 3 goes to the power of 4, and then 2 goes to the power of 4. If you kept the negative on the 2, then notice negative 3 to the power of 4, that's just going to give us positive 81. 2 to the power of 4 is going to give us 16. But if you had positive 3 and then negative 2 to the power of 4, well, you would still get positive 16, and then positive 81 in the numerator. Right, so either way, it would be the same. It's just, again, it's more proper for the negative to be in the, um, in the numerator. And then over here, flip the fraction. So again, it would be 4 over negative 3. We could put the negative up top, and then that would change to positive 3. So we'd end up with negative 4 to the power of 3 over 3 to the power of 3, which would give us what, 16 times 4 would give us 64, sorry, negative 4 to the power of 3 would give us negative 64, right? A negative value to an odd exponent would give us a negative value. A negative value to an even exponent will always give you a positive value, as I mentioned over here as well. 
right? So we'll just be careful over here. And then three to the power of three, that would give us 27. So negative 64 over 27 is the answer for J.